Hello, this is a video to show you what you need to get started printing at home. Um, just a few things that you will need, definitely, and then uh, a few optionals as well. Um, the first thing you will need is a flat surface. First of all, a good table that's fairly flat and stable as well. Um, and then on top of the table, something flat to roll ink out on. Now, I have a piece of Perspex here. I've got some pieces of Perspex here as well. But you could use placemats, you could use um, you could use glass if you have some spare glass from a frame or something like that. Um, plastic normally works well if you have a piece of plastic lying around or a placemat. Um, and you want it big enough, um, well, the size that you would like to print, ideally. Um, like I say, I have a really big piece of Perspex here, but you, you can just have a piece that big or even smaller if you want to. Um, the next thing that you will definitely need if you want to roll out nice even um, layers of ink is a roller. So these are rubber rollers, they're not like the ones you um, paint walls with. Um, this is a nice sturdy one with a wooden handle um, and this is quite large, it's relatively expensive but you can um, get these ones from most art shops as well. And they're just as good, they're really good. I would um, suggest the nice solid ones rather than the ones with um, little metal spindles. Now most of these, you, you can get these in most art shops these days. You can also get them online at Great Art, um, the art suppliers. Um, these are a very reasonable price. Um, about. So we also need something for you to take a print with. So we're not using a printing press. Um, we'll be hand burnishing, hand printing. So I use quite a substantial Baron, B-A-R-E-N, which is one of these. And it, all it is is a circle with um, some sort of twine underneath, I think, to make it really, really even. And then you can apply pressure evenly onto the back of your print. But you don't have to have one of these. Um, there are cheaper ones, there are traditional Japanese ones which are made of bamboo. They don't last as long but they're just as good. Uh, and we have these little ones that they sell at Great Art which are um, just little, little wooden handles with some felt on the bottom that give a nice even pressure. But you don't even need to buy those. Um, if you've got a spare rolling pin at home you can use those to apply pressure. Just make sure it is very flat and even. Um, if you have a spare roller, you can use a spare roller to, to put pressure onto the back of your print. And of course, the traditional wooden spoon. Um, they are actually really good. Um, if, if you do have a couple, uh, a spare one at home, then they can be used. Um, the other thing is that there are certain ways of printing where you can just use your hands to burnish. So if all else fails and you don't have anything with you, you can apply pressure by hand and it actually can have some really nice effects as well. Um, paint wise or ink wise, I use um, oil colours. So I don't mix them with anything. Um, so I tend to use a lemon yellow, um, a scarlet or a cadmium red, a white, and usually a Prussian blue and sometimes an ultramarine blue. Now you don't have to use oil colours um, but if you have any around that's great. Um, the other things that are good are block printing ink if you have any of that. You might, if you've done line printing before you might have used that. Um, there's loads of different um, companies that, that will sell those. I've got some little um, tubes here, they come in tubes. So we've got magenta, permanent yellow and ultramarine is what they normally come in and we've got a cyan as well and um, you can mix most colors with those so if you wanted to just get those three go for it um, one thing that you cannot print with is acrylics or at least acrylics that dry normally they will dry too quickly for you to print from so if you have acrylics that um, sort of open acrylics whereby they don't dry so quickly you can use those but other than that I wouldn't use acrylics you'll end up in a big mess with lots of dried acrylic paint on everything <laughs> um yeah okay um what else would we need now some other things that are uh, useful 
um, I have just little bits of card that I use as spatulas to mix colour and also just to spread colour onto my surface as well. So that's really useful. I don't know if you have spatulas, that's great. If you have a little knife or painting knife, that's great. Or if you've got some spare card, just cut some, some of those up. Uh, spare uh, scrap paper um, is really, really useful for putting onto the back of prints when you're taking your print. Um, and of course, the paper that you need to print with. So I use a lot of tissue paper. So this is um, from a roll, I get it in a roll and I cut it up into the size that I like. But you can just get tissue paper from, you know, the stationery shop, um, from the post office. Um, that's just as good. Uh, it won't be archival, that's the only thing. Um, the thinner the better, generally speaking, if you're hand printing, because you're only using hand pressure to try and get the ink from your surface onto your paper. So, um, Japanese paper is a good one. I don't know if you can see this, it's quite, it's quite thin but strong paper. Um, you can, if you want to, and you want to do a bit, a bit of experimentation, also just use things like newspaper, newsprint, um, magazine paper, if you want to already have a surface to print onto and have an almost like a collage -y type surface. Um, and you can just use plain cartridge paper and computer paper as well. They will have a different effect and you might need to put a bit more ink down, um, but they will print um, and you can get some really nice effects with those as well. Um, there are some nice pads of Japanese washi paper, sort of A4, um, that you can get at places like Great Art uh, online um, and also probably in some art shops as well now. I'm pretty sure you can get those or single sheets that you can cut down as well. Um, okay, so the other things you might like to have with you are um, some textures that you can print with or press into the, uh, the ink. So um, just things from the house are fine. I've got some foil, um, I've got some old bits of sort of lacy stuff, string, um, some of that old plastic uh, tablecloth stuff there, that's really nice to print with. Bubble wrap, if you have any parcels that come in the meantime. Um, and the other thing that's quite nice to print with are natural objects. So um, the best ones are flat, fairly flat, so I've got like a holly leaf there, um, a ginkgo leaf, they're, they're great to, to print from, they're nice and flat and they take up the ink. And we've also got things like feathers. You'll need very thin paper to print from feathers, but um, they ca it can be done. Um, but the world's your oyster really in terms of textures. If you see things in the house that you want to use, grab them. Um, they probably will get messy, so nothing that you want to keep. Um, and we've also got things that we can burnish with, as well as your, your rolling pins and your wooden spoons. Uh, we can make really nice effects with, these are some Play-Doh, plastic Play-Doh um, tools. Um, what else have we got here? I've got an old whisk. So these would be for um, pressing into the back of your print and making really nice patterns. Um, got some plastic knives here for, um, and also just the ends of pencils and pens. So just have an array of pencils and pens around you and you can just grab them and draw with them and press into your print. Um, so in terms of keeping clean and cleaning up, apron or old clothes, definitely worth it. You don't want to ruin your clothes. Um, probably put newspaper or something over your table, unless it's a messy table and that's fine. Uh, we will be cleaning up with vegetable oil and we will do quite a lot of cleaning up so we clean up between each colour. So um, you'll want a, a fair amount of vegetable oil and just some rags. I have lots of old rags, I've got a daughter so all her old clothes get to rags. Um, yeah, so if you have any old rags that's brilliant. If not, um, kitchen towel is good. You'll, you'll need a roll of it probably. Um, something that will absorb the oil up and you can just you know, bung in the bin. Um, you may or may not want to have um, gloves as well, latex gloves. Um, it can get a bit messy on the fingers. The ink doesn't always come out straight away. 
Um, so if you've got somewhere nice to be straight afterwards, you might want to wear gloves. <laughs> um, and I think that might be it. So, um, most of these things can be bought really easily or you can find in your home. Um, so, that's it. You're all ready to print at home. <laughs>